Hey guys, so this week I want to show you five super tips for Google Slides presentations and how to make them really awesome with some simple tips. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so tip number one is cropping images. So I'm gonna show you right here. Um, I got some crops. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm gonna crop some crops and we'll put those in the background. Actually, let's make a crop circle. Oh. Punishing, punishing. Here we go. Anyway, once you insert an image, you can get images a lot of different ways. The Explorer tool down here is a really cool way to do that. Um, but uh, that was in a different video. You can kind of check that out. But what I'm going to do once I have my image, I'm just going to click on it once. And then you can see, you know, like size and rotation, position, recolor, adjustment. And you double click on it. Sorry, that's a text box. Uh, then I get these handles and I can shrink this in however I want. Now this is non-destructive, which means if you don't like it, once you click away, um, you can always get it back. So I'll slide this guy around wherever I want and then click away and now have cropped my, my, my crops. I don't know. Anyway, so that's the first tip, how to crop images to get only really what you're looking for, but in a non-destructive way. That's the first one. The second thing I want to show you guys is how to import slides. Now this is an old one and you probably already know it, but you can import them from other presentations. So if you do things like uh, you create one slide and you use it over and over and over and over and over, rather than making a copy of your whole presentation, you could just copy that one slide. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to go over here to file and I'm going to go all the way to import slides. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose what I want here. So I have this animal icons. I did a video on how you can use icons uh, just to kind of give kids some anonymity and a little bit of fun where you can get them for free, all sorts of stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this first one. I don't really care. Now, I don't really want to keep the original theme. I changed my backgrounds up. Of course, I don't have a background in this one, but if you use the same one all the time, keep that checked. But otherwise, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to import it. So it's just gonna grab that slide from that presentation and bring it right in. So now if I click on it, it's gonna have all the images that I had in there. And since I'm using crops, um, maybe I wanna pick a farm animal like this cow for the next tip, which is how to link within your presentation. So you can kind of create like a table of contents and jump around. I'm gonna show you another one of those, how you might do that. It's really simple, you just click on it. Now this one, I had linked to a slide in that other presentation, but it's not there. So what I'm gonna do is, in this case, it's ready for me to link, but if that's not, right for you, so I'm going to remove that link. It just looks like this. You're going to go ahead to insert and you're going to go to um, hyperlink or link. And then right here, you're going to choose slides in this presentation. So let's say for some reason, I want to link back to the first slide. Somebody clicks the cow, it takes them back to the crops. Feed the feed the beast. Okay, so now that's ready to go. Okay, so that's pretty cool if you have a bunch of stuff, and I'll show you how that works. Um, I was doing a friction inquiry lab in my class this week, and I really wanted it to be sort of a Socratic method where I just get to ask the kids questions. I don't tell them anything. They play, and, and we kind of banter back and forth. Well, so what I did as I have my station guides set up right here. And in this one, every one of these, these are just text boxes, but they're linked to station one, the directions, the reflection on each one is linked back here in this one. And then also on every slide, you can see over here, I have a link back to the uh, table of contents, which I call the station guide. And I also have a link to the next slide where they just write down, hey, this is what I learned. And you can see I'm doing this in Pear Deck. Uh, if you haven't seen any of the videos I've done in Pear Deck, check those out, really awesome add-on for Google Slides. But let me pop back here. So, so the first one is how to crop images. The second one is how to import stuff. Number three is how to link things within. Um, number four is, I think this is a killer tip here. Uh, if you are sharing videos in slide presentations for students that are virtual, make sure that you're doing it for ones that you own if you want to avoid problems. Now, some of these things are in the public domain. You don't necessarily need to download them off YouTube and get into all copyright issues and everything. But uh, what I did is I'm inserting a video. This video is free by NASA. It's about the Mars helicopter. Really cool story. Um, and so what I did is I put it into a shared folder. And I'm going to show you that right now. So if I go to my Google Drive, you can see I have tons and tons of folders. And some of them, like this Mars one, has this little person icon on it. Well, if I double click that, all of these videos that I found on the current Mars mission going on right now, the most recent one, 
are in here. And these are free downloadable from NASA. So I put them in my Google Drive and I shared the entire folder with anybody who has the link. So if you clicked on this link, you'd be able to get to these. Now my students are in our domain, our Google domain, and so they can get to them. And this way, if the video was blocked on YouTube and I was, oh man, it ruined my lesson. It's not going to. I find a video that I know I have rights to. I put it into my Google folder, uh, and then I share that folder with anybody who has the link. Then when I go back to my presentation and I insert a video, let's say I'm going to insert another one and go to insert video, and then you can actually type... Uh, whatever the name of it is. Now this one happens to be the Mars helicopter. That's in that shared folder and it, it will automatically play because they have rights to it. So that's a really cool tip on getting videos to play so you're not getting blocked or you know bounced around. Kids don't have access to it. So that would be tip number four. And tip number five is a really cool one. It is that you can voice type text. Now the way Google Slides is set up under the tools menu up at the top here is you have this voice type for speaker notes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this while I'm recording and you'll notice where it puts it. So I click on it and it opens this little guy over here. I just click to speak and I'm just gonna say, here we go. There's a really great feature in Google Slides that allows you to voice dictate your notes in the speaker notes section of Google Slides. Now I click on it and stop. What's really cool is if I go to that slide, all I have to do is copy and paste, and I can put that wherever I want. It doesn't have to stay there. That's where it's gonna put it, so you can double check that everything's good to go, and then you put it wherever you need it to go. So if you have instructions, and you just wanna be quick because you type horribly like I do, then this would be a great way to do that. So those are my five uh, quick tips on Google Slides. Uh, stick around, because I've got five other extensions and awesome tips coming for Google Slides in the next video. That will be linked right there if you haven't seen it. And so I hope this was helpful. I hope it helps you kick some class and we'll catch you next time.